the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. Yeah, there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. Church at Chapel Hill. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today, whether it be in person or online. Thank you for being a part of our service. Before I get started with announcements today, I don't know about you, but I've been pleading with the Lord lately for wisdom, just in dealing with everything that is going on in this world. And I was thinking about it, and I sent out a text message to some of the guys in this church, and obviously the Bible says that if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So I've been asking the Lord for that wisdom. But you say, well, what does that have to do with what we're doing in here today? Well, as Pastor John is preaching on being together and being in church and, and fellowshipping with believers, I thought of this verse. It says, in an abundance of counsel, there is safety. Well, where would you rather get counsel than from your fellow believers? You go to God first, obviously, but you check in with godly people that the Lord puts in your path and surrounds you with. And the best way to do that is to be here. So as he's preaching about being together, know that in these turbulent, crazy times, it's more important than ever to be together. So you can get that godly wisdom from saints that are surrounding you each and every day or each time you come here on Sunday. So that is for free. That's your little mini message. And now we can move on to announcements. I think we're starting with the memory verse. 
So we'll all continue to say this together. We're in Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. Thank you very much. Next screen there, Haley. Uh, choir, if you're interested in choir, it says that you can. Let me read this so I get it right. I butchered it last week. You are to text the number 81010 to at C-A-C-H choir 2. So if you need to take a picture of that screen, go ahead. Again, send that text message, and that will obviously go to Lindsay. Or if you have any questions, you can talk to Lindsay, or you can talk to Stacy if you're interested in being a part of a choir. My understanding is if you've been a part in the past, or if you're interested in joining now, they want to hear from you. So please send that text message. I don't know if we have a screen for this next one. We do. So that prayer breakfast that we mentioned a couple weeks ago is rapidly coming upon us. Again, I believe our own Pastor John is emceeing this prayer breakfast. Uh, the mayor of Mount Vernon is hosting it. So if you're interested, the information is on the screen in terms of how you can get tickets and the cost and all of that type of stuff. And obviously, if you have any questions, you can see John or you can see me and we will get you that information. Next screen. I'm going to wait on that one. I did want to announce that there is a baptism service on October 10th. So if anyone is interested in being baptized, if you haven't taken that biblical step of obedience, baptism does not save you. But if the Lord tells you to do something, I don't know why you would have any hesitation in terms of doing it. So October 10th, see Pastor John. I don't know if there's a sign-up sheet or not. There is a sign-up sheet at our Connection Center. So if you or your child or someone you know is interested, please sign up for that. The picture on the screen, we have been praying and praying for Josh Taylor. And um, unfortunately, the Lord called him home. He is having a joyful time at this moment. But we are mourning for him and his family. And this morning, as we pray for the service and as we pray for the offering, we're going to lift up his family that you can see there's beautiful family in prayer. And just pray that God would give them peace in this difficult time. So would you bow your head with me? And let's pray for the service and let's pray for the tailors. Father, we just come before you today, Lord. And first and foremost, we just praise you. That your word has a plan for how to deal with these confusing times. Lord, you tell us where to be, who to be with, and what to do in the circumstances of life that can seem so confusing. So Lord, we praise you for that. And we pray that you would be with the Taylor family, Lord, as they are mourning the loss of a husband and a father, Lord. Be with his wife and kids, Lord. Give them peace that surpasses understanding, Lord. I didn't follow this on social media as closely as my wife did, but according to Kristen, the praises that his wife was able to articulate via social media, even in the midst of the storm, prove that you were with her, Lord, because it's not humanly possible to do those things. So, Father, continue to be with her, continue to be with the kids and the family. Lord, give them peace, give them strength, meet all of their needs. And Father, as Pastor John comes up today to remind us of the importance of being together, may our hearts be stirred to be with each other even more in these difficult times as the nation was reminded of an anniversary this weekend that just brought so much anger and fear in bitterness, Lord, I just pray that we would be wise enough to be in your word and to be together so that you can guide us through these circumstances. And Father, I pray that you would bless the offering, Lord. Use it to bring glory to your name, not to enrich anyone here, Lord, so that we can bring glory to your name, so that we can spread the message even further that you are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Lord Jesus. And we pray all this in his heavenly and holy name. Amen. At this time, we'll ask that you turn your attention to the screens as we're going to play a video to honor 9-11. When it first happened, the minutes felt like hours. The hours felt like days. And the horror of what happened, one detail after another, could hardly be processed, much less understood. 
Then days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into years. Memorials were built, wars were fought, victims' names were read. Survivors tried to pick up the pieces over and over again. But no matter how much time has passed, we vow to hold these memories. We will never forget those who were taken from us. The world changes and shifts this way and that. But one thing stays constant. One thing is steady. God. God weeps with us. God mourns with us. God bottles up our tears and records them in his book. He is closer to you than your own breath and remains the cornerstone of life. God is the solid ground holding us up as the world moves beneath us. It's as true today as it was on that day. Our God reigns. He reigns over principalities and powers. His dominion stretches beyond what our eyes can see. And when the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, our God reigns, and we will always remember. Will you stand with us? Aren't you thankful that in spite of the chaos going on around us, that we still live in America, and that we are free in this morning, and that we are able to come together to worship our Creator? Let's just sing a couple of these songs this morning.
just so thankful that we serve a God who is faithful. And you know, even in the midst of our questions and the unknowns, and as, as we cried out for God to, to heal Josh, and I think of Aaron and the family this morning, that wasn't God's plan. And I am so thankful that I know my God well enough to know how good he is and how much he loves me and he loves you and he loves Aaron and he loves Josh that it was Josh's time to take him home. And I'm so thankful that even in the midst of questions, that we can believe for it, that we can trust in him because he is the God that moves mountains. He is the God that restores hope. He is the God that changes life. And he's here today. He's still able, he's still willing. So this morning, let's sing this out, that Lord, we believe for it.
dismiss our children ages 4 to 12 to kids church ages 3 and under are dismissed to the nursery and as they go out let's just continue singing this So good to see all of you this morning and uh, to worship with you. I invite you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Acts. And that's in the New Testament if you're unfamiliar. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. And um, while you're turning there, let me just uh, mention to you that, Lord willing, in, a, uh, in the coming weeks, I received a letter from the Taylor's pastor, We've supported the Taylors for many years now, missionaries to Honduras. They came home for uh, furlough for a couple of months, just a few weeks, and then we're going back to the mission field. While they were here, Josh got COVID and pneumonia, and all of those things began to complicate together, and uh, he eventually ended up on life support, and then they took the life support off yesterday, and he died, and so that young mother and family, um, when they, so they go to church in Westerville, a, a church uh, that, interestingly, my family, when we traveled and sang when I was a little boy, we sang in that church many times, but uh, they attend their, that's their sending church, but we were one of their supporting churches, and so their pastor uh, sent a letter to me and just said in the coming weeks, um, when they went to Honduras, they sold out. Um, Josh was a teacher, and uh, they just surrendered everything to the Lord, sold their home, sold everything, and, and moved their family and felt the calling to be missionaries. And so there's a, um, 
as at least for the time being, that family will be here in the States. They'll have to find housing and uh, transportation, all of those things. And so there's, a, there's an opportunity for us to give uh, and strive to help meet this family's needs in their, in their darkest time of uh, their lives. And so I just wanted to put you on notice uh, that we will let you be more aware of that. But it's just uh, an incredible thought that we have two main missionary families that we've supported for many years. One, the Jansma family that we've supported for, since the beginning of our church for well over 20 years, and then the Taylors for the past many years. And both of the men, the dads in their 40s, uh, missionaries, have died from, uh, from this uh, virus. At least that was a, a big contrib- contributing factor uh, in their deaths. And so it's just uh, heavy for them, heavy for our church. But again, it is an opportunity for us to love these people and uh, show our love in, in different ways and, and in our giving. So just keep that in mind and um, wanted to just make you aware of that. Well, today we are continuing... <clears throat> the series that we began last week, and if you missed last Sunday, I would encourage you to catch up. You can find the context and the setting, and I know I share that little blurb often, but there are people who come and visitors and uh, people who are away for a Sunday, so I just want to put that in there that if sometimes when you just jump right into a message, people are like, well, what, what does all this mean, and where are we, and where are we going, and where have we come from, and so any series that I preach, I always strive to give the background, uh, the biblical setting, and just the context, and then how we apply it to our own church family and to our own personal lives. And so I think it's important to mention that just so you know that uh, when we jump in today, right in the middle of a scripture that we, we have covered previously, and so you can find that on our church podcast and social media and, and our website and YouTube and all those things. So just wanted to put that out there so in case you you feel a little bit uh, uninformed as we get into this today. But last Sunday we covered in the theme of being together from Acts 2, it starts out by giving us a picture of what salvation is and in order to be together with God and with the body of Christ you must be saved. As the Bible says you must be born again and so that is the first step you must take in this Uh, reality of being and this desire of being together. And today, Acts 2 will show us that after salvation, after you have surrendered your life to Christ and you've repented of your sins and you begin to, you're a, a infant Christian, what are the next steps? Uh, what is God's formula? What is God's pattern for his people and his church to be together? And, uh, it just lays it out here in Acts 2. And with all of the turmoil that we're going through and all of the loss and all of the um, just difficulty and struggle that so many are facing in their personal lives and in our nation, I just felt led for a few weeks that we needed to touch, go back to the basics and uh, just listen to what God's Word has to say about His church and His plan for us together. So Acts chapter 2, verse 40 Picking up where we left off last Sunday. It says, And with many other words, Peter testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who, were, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common. Let's pray together. Father, we do... Just come to you, Lord, with, um, you know, in a season like we are in, we are so grateful, we are so blessed, and yet we, we don't want to um, just try to 
to press through without acknowledging that, Lord, there's a, there's a lot of pain, there's a lot of hurting going on as we reflect on the memories of yesterday, how that changed all of our lives and our futures and our families. And, and then, Lord, to uh, just again yesterday, the same day, even remembering 9-11 of Benghazi. And then now for the Taylor family, it will be 9-11 of the death of a, just a loving, faithful father, husband, missionary, man of God. And so, uh, Lord, we, and then just there are many people who come in here today who need to be uplifted and encouraged. And so, Lord, whatever the need is here today in each one of these aisles and these seats, with these families, with these marriages, with these employees, with these bosses, with these husbands and wives, with the single moms, the single dads. Uh, Lord, every uh, Lord element of just human society is represented, Lord, in this sanctuary today of just we're all, we're all experiencing in one way or the other, the same highs, the same lows, the same heartaches, and in, in one form or another, because we live in a broken, sinful world, and sorrow and sin and death and spiritual warfare is all around us. And Lord, today, I have been so tremendously uplifted and encouraged just by being in your house with your people and reading your scripture, and memorizing scripture to get to, together, and praying together, and singing together, and uh, just the, the privilege to have contact with one another, to shake hands and give hugs and just love on one another. Even in the midst of such um, confusing times, Lord, you give us things in our lives that settle us, and one of those is your word, your Holy Spirit, the body of Christ, the church, the gathering together. And so, Lord, I pray for those that, that are here today with heavy hearts that you would uplift them. And, Lord, that you would just, Jesus, you are real, you are mighty, you are able. May we have the capacity and the attention span and the surrender to recognize you as mighty and able and capable and the almighty Savior who loves us and gave yourself for us. So Lord, please meet with us in a, in a special, fresh, powerful way today. There are so many elements in this place that we cannot fix. But we serve in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, God, that says, Now to him who is able to do far above, exceedingly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. And that power is you, Holy Spirit. So we ask for your help. We ask for your hope. And we ask for the joy of the Lord to be our strength as we move through these scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I told you last Sunday that over the summer, Pastor Gary and I and different of our, ones of our leaders have been praying and planning for this new season of ministry. The school year is also pretty much a new uh, ministry season. And I want to set up the remainder of this message by just showing you a few screens of who we are and what we are and why we are and what we do as a church, as a local church body. And our, the personality, every church is, just has a different personality. Uh, many pastors have certain themes and giftings that God has laid on them where they just, uh, just for their whole ministry, will just hit those themes. And, uh, have, and so, you know, and then just... The, the makeup of your leadership and, and families and all of those things that makes us just like your family. Uh, our church is different than any other church in this community or in this state. And uh, I, I am grateful and just privileged and love to be a part of this church family. 
and uh, this is home and I'm grateful for it. But I want to just, as I lay out the rest of this message, begin by sharing, uh, just because we have many new people, I haven't done this for quite some time, uh, visitors, new people, people who are um, maybe even that are a regular part of this church family, but are just maybe unaware of who's who and what's what. And so uh, I've gone down through this list. I've checked with two or three people to make sure I didn't forget anybody. If I did, forgive me now. Uh, not my intention to leave anyone. We have so many people who serve, and so I obviously can't mention them all. But just trying to cover the, the, the basics and the, the leaders and, and servants who lead in different ministries. So let me just run through these, and then we'll, we'll get back into the Scripture. The pastors of the church, uh, our founding pastor is my father, Dan Wister. And uh, he's preaching today in Bradford, but he is uh, still part of our church, and they are still here often, and my mom, and, and uh, so he's our founding pastor and uh, pastor emeritus. That, that means he's still involved. He's still part of this church. We still love him, support him, encourage him, and he still, he still has a part here. He still has influence here. He still has an office here, and we're glad he is here. And so I, uh, I utilize Dad and his wisdom often, and uh, he's a great blessing to our church. And, but Emeritus is, is more of an honorary title, but he is still one of our pastors, and so we're grateful for that. In May, Pastor Gary Hankins uh, came on board, I'm so, so thankful for that, and uh, just grateful for, as I mentioned last week, uh, what a tremendous blessing he has been and is being in my life personally and in the life of our church and a multiplicity of ways. And then James Trent, uh, sitting over here to my left, your right, uh, is our youth pastor. And they've been in that now for, I think, going on three years and just doing a tremendous, phenomenal job with our youth and his wife, Beth. And then myself and my wife, Carrie, uh, are privileged to lead. So that's our pastoral uh, team. And uh, you could also use the term elders, but we use the term pastors here in our church. And then our deacons, those who are helping carry the load by serving and giving, uh, helping give direction and support to the pastors and to our church family. We've got Steve and Steve Thompson, his wife Janet, Tom Hubble and his wife Pat, John Hubbard, his wife Jenny, Casey Swanson and Natalie over here to my left. They, every, all these are in here today and John Burke and Kelly and then Donna Charles is our treasurer and uh, she helps us uh, navigate through the finances and helping uh, through your generosity and your giving to make sure that that is done well. And then uh, our Chapel Hill groups and ministries, uh, we have youth group, also led by uh, the Trents, as I just mentioned, Kids Church on Sunday mornings. Um, we've had a kids program through COVID and everything. We put a pause on that. We're still continuing to pray about our approach to that in regards to people who can serve and are willing to serve and the time and all of those things. And so that will come more into play in the days ahead, but uh, Kristen Hankins uh, leads that, and so many of you serve in that ministry, very grateful for that. And Infusion Families, um, and we have asked Josh and Connie recently, they have the gift of hospitality and just the gift of desiring to get our groups together, and so we talked to Josh and Connie a couple of months ago and just said, would you guys be willing to, uh, also through COVID and this time, our, our, so many of our groups have just disbanded. Um, and, you know, we, but as we slowly get back together, we ask them to help facilitate and lead our young families in gathering back together. And so we're planning, putting a calendar back together. And uh, we will gather together, Lord willing, again on Sunday nights as we have done for so many years. And also other extracurricular activities that we will do that will involve all of our families and all of the kids. And so uh, that's where we are in those. And then... We have a Tuesday morning ladies' prayer meeting here at the church that my wife leads, Monday night ladies' Bible study that Kim White leads, and that's going to, Lord willing, starting in October. Uh, the nursery, Krista Bowens, and so many of you uh, continue to serve in that. I would just encourage you, whether it's our kids' church or our nursery ministry, as I made an appeal a few weeks ago, that you uh, that's an opportunity and a need to serve. And then... Our music ministry, Lindsay Ford, my sister, who is up here playing the keyboard. She leads our praise team and along with uh, assistance from uh, Stacy Colbertson and Donna Charles. They just take care of the music 
and we're so grateful to do a phenomenal job and um, and all of those that are involved from John Hubbard to Tom uh, to Tim and Katie to so many we're just thankful and then audio and video you got Tom Hubble back there and uh, Eddie Johnson is making sure that we're online for those who are either not able to be here or who are long distance my grandma's probably tuning in so uh, good to see y'all and um, and then <clears throat> Our connection team, this is another ministry that we began and it was uh, gaining traction and just really effective and then we, we put a pause on that. But John and Kelly Burke lead that and that is, uh, we're looking into continuing that and starting that back up again. And then our men's fellowship, uh, Southside Diner. I'll just, let me put a plug in here for our men. Uh, they meet on Saturday mornings at 7 o'clock and uh, if you come at 7, you're late. Uh, you're very late. Most are there by probably six, uh, at least six thirty. But you get there, and we, we just have breakfast together. My son and I have uh, just enjoyed going. We went yesterday, and uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, it's just a great time of fellowship, laid back. And so, if you if you've not gone to that, uh, guys, I would encourage you take your boys. It's just a great time. We we've the last few weeks began to add tables, and uh, just just thankful for that. Men need good godly men and their lives and so so thankful for Ted he's done that for about um, 50 years and so uh, just uh, it's great and um, and Ted's only 55 so he's been he's been a good example of a faithful servant um, and then our 50 plus fellowship uh, Dennis and Kim White and uh, they do just gatherings and get-togethers, and uh, we're planning for a Christmas banquet that so many of you are involved in, that we go up to Dur Dutchman together and just enjoy fellowship. And then our Chapel Hill Christian Academy, which is many of you, and we're going to do an open house here soon of just the church building. So many of you uh, are just unfamiliar. I can't tell you how many people at times will somehow end up up there and go, man, I had no idea. Like, this is phenomenal. And so we're just going to have an open house so you know the ministries of our church and where so many things are. And we've been uh, doing renovating for, well, you're always renovating uh, when you get this old. And so we're, we've reached another stage of that. And so, uh, but we've recently renovated uh, the schoolrooms and classrooms and offices. And so we'll have an open house here, hopefully, before too long. And you can just go around and those who lead in those different areas can just kind of give you a walk through. And I think it'd be a blessing and fun and just let you feel a little bit more uh, informed about who we are and what we do as a church and uh, but upstairs is, is tremendous and so our school uh, Gary Hankins and Beth Trent and my wife and Kristen they're all involved in that and so that is that is our uh, the, the bulk of who we are and what we are and let me just pause uh, before I move forward and say how grateful and thankful and humbled and privileged I am to be a part of all of these moving elements of Chapel Hill and we're not a massive church we're not a you know a mega church but we are a church that has a lot of people that are a lot of souls that have a lot of needs and it is an awesome privilege to be able to serve and lead and be a blessing and be in life together with every one of you let me just say that we love you guys it's a privilege and you say well you know our church is you know not huge it's 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 a it's a blessing and it and it is a lot when you look at when you look at all of those moving parts and then you think of all of those parts include leadership and then they include servants and then they include those who attend and 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 you get all of these things and then striving to for it to all move together and move forward and move smoothly uh, there are there are so many blessings to that and uh, there are challenges there are burdens there are struggles at times and yet I'm so so thankful for all of the participation in our church and in our togetherness and so that makes up who we are now uh, I told you we're praying about new possibilities new vision and this is what this will this next slide 
is more about, and that is Chapel Hill small groups. And over the years, we have had multiple approaches. Uh, I've met with multiple pastors, small group leaders from other churches in town, out of town, out of state. Um, over the years, and especially recently, as Pastor Gary and I have been praying about, you know, what, what will our fellowship, uh, especially in this time when there's been so much separation and disconnection of kind of our regular groups that we've had. We've had Wednesday night Bible studies, that's been put on pause, and all of those things. And so as we strive to preach on being together and being an Acts chapter 2 church, and just following God's blueprint, God's message never changes. His mission never changes. But methods, they, they change over the years. And, and they can come and they can go. And, and I'm not afraid of change. I don't, I don't want to change just change. Um, but we want to be open that as, as time and history changes, that we, make, that we adjust to where we are. None of you are sitting here with a chisel and a rock uh, reading from God's word that way. Sometimes they did. None of you are sitting here. I didn't see anybody with a quill and a scroll going, <laughs> okay, now, um, you know, it's, it, times change. I'm not up here in a robe or a kilt, and all of you are grateful for that. Um, and so, you know, all those, those, those things can shift and change. We understand that. We understand that we serve a God who does not change. Amen? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But don't take that scripture out of context and say that the methods that we use can never change. They do. And uh, we have to be, recognize that and strive to be spiritually mature and unified and, and, uh, and move forward in those times when, when there is change. And it doesn't matter if it's a family, a marriage, uh, a church, there's always, always, always going to be some element of change. Uh, there's people here who've been here from day one in our family room, in my parents' house. And when we had, as my dad has mentioned many times, but when we had to transition out of our house, it was, it was literally just, just disappointing, I guess you could say. For some, it was discouraging because my parents had the fireplace. My mom's from Alabama, so you got the, you know, just the comfy, cozy. We're sitting on couches. You know, we're popping popcorn. Uh, the kids are somewhere out in the woods. It was just tremendous, you know. But if you're going to continue to grow, and we had to eventually move on from there. And so uh, leading through change is, is challenging and difficult, and yet God puts you in different seasons and puts people in different positions for different times to do that. So this is not a, I would consider a huge change, but it is an opportunity uh, that we are seeking that when it comes to small groups that we have been praying and planning for this, uh, Lord willing, if things continue, depending on your response as a church family, um, if we begin small groups, it would be uh, after our anniversary service. That's a big Sunday for us, so that's the second Sunday of October. And then from there, we would um, look to begin some small groups. We understand that if initially our small groups will be small. Um, our, our fusion families, our young families, are going to gather on Sunday nights as a bigger small group. But more often than not, most small groups, as you can see, will be and the four to 12 person range besides children, you know, and we'll, we'll explain all these things. But I'm just trying to give you, just whet your appetite for what we're praying through and planning that, we'll, uh, that would take the place of Wednesday night Bible study and um, in time maybe other groups if that takes place. We're not, we're not cutting off any current groups, but they may meld into these eventually. So they'll be based on most of the time stage of life and uh, where you are in your life and strive to put people together. We're not afraid of, of younger folks getting together with older folks, but more often than not, it would be stage of life. And then based on location, proximity, where you are and, and how it's most convenient that if you meet week to week, that you gather together, not here, but in uh, a group leader's home. And we would choose those group leaders and uh, we're working through that. We've got a list, and it's not that you can't ever lead a group, 
we've got a process of, of going through that, how we want to do that. And then initially, and this probably won't even be this way, this first round, but initially, and again, things may change, it will be three six-week terms throughout the year. We'll take the summer off. You say, well, 18 weeks, that's nothing. Well, if you come to church faithfully every Sunday, that's 52 moments out of your year. And then you add another 18, and then we have the other fellowships, Praise and Pie and Christmas Concert and all those things. And you're pushing uh, probably, if you're just faithful to those things and you participate in a small group, you're looking at probably at least 70 to 75 things on your calendar that just right there, that's just the basics of Chapel Hill. And so we're striving to, if we start something new, that we don't overwhelm our people with saying, well, good night, my life's already the church. And uh, so we understand that it won't be for everyone, but it will be for many. And um, again, we've been studying this planning meeting. I've met with multiple, like I say, other pastors and just striving. And then how it will look like, what we're going to teach, what we're going to, how those, those gatherings will look, we'll share all that. But I just wanted to give you uh, an understanding that a lot happens here at Chapel Hill. And we're so, so thankful and just so grateful for all of the help and the leaders. And so if you, so this is, this is the first step. You say, well, okay, you mentioned small groups. What do we do? First step is let us know that you are interested in being a part of a small group in someone's home. And again, I know this kind of have to be vague because we got to see who's, you know, available. But as a church family, uh, you can text this, that same number, and it will let you, my wife know, who helps me as an assistant, administrating, helping with the church. And she helps serve me in that role and serve the church in that role. And so then she will put you on an update list to say, hey, I want to be reminded of church activities and what's going on with our church family. And so she'll do that. So you'll start getting updates. You'll get the prayer requests. And then for small groups, she'll say, hey, do you want to be a part of this? And then you'll start signing up. There's also on the back, for those of you who like the, the quill and the scroll, there is a physical, tangible sign-up sheet at the Connection Center back there. So you're welcome to do that. And again, just on baptism, please, if God's stirring your heart in that, I'll meet with you. We want to get uh, as many baptized, uh, Lord willing, on October 10th. And so there's a sign-up sheet for that. But all of that, baptism, everything, we're striving to, being that we are in this digital world, to communicate with you better and engage with you better through that. So just keep that in mind. Now, I shared all of that back to Scripture, okay? That was an introduction. It's 1053, uh, 145, that's what we're shooting for. So we'll get settled in here and you be encouraged. Uh, sharing all of that and all of the elements and the moving parts of a church family and what keeps us together, not just keeps us unified, but keeps us productive and on mission and doing what we believe God has called us to do as a church family what is the biblical ingredients of this church family? You say, wow, I mean, you know, that may not be a ton, but that's plenty uh, going around in this church. So what does that look like, though? What are, the, what are the inward ingredients that makes all of what I just shared happen? And this scripture that we're reading just lays it out. And so again, I want to walk down through it. Verse, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And again, we wrote down six or seven words last Sunday of what salvation look like, looks like. I want you to write down and remember these few words that this is what a church family and a church in operation looks like. The first words would be faithful. A church is faithful and committed. Verse 42 in Acts 2 says, They continued steadfastly. They continued. They continued. They continued. They were not hit and miss, up and down, side to side, in and out. They just continued. They were faithful. They were committed. Uh, day after day, week after week, month after month. They were just faithful. And I'm so grateful for your faithfulness and your commitment to the church. So faithfulness and commitment, verse 42 again, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And so God lays it on a pastor and a shepherd's heart to, as best he is able, know the people, know his community, 
and the, and the pastors, plural, and for us to work together to meet the needs, the spiritual needs, the, the relational needs, the financial needs, the physical needs of the church family is the best of our ability. And so our, that is our calling. And so the, the way we do that is we go to Scripture and we say, Oh, dear Jesus, how can I be a blessing to these people? How can I lead these people? And we do preaching, expository preaching. We preach through series. We do topical preaching. We do whatever we feel in this season that God is leading us to, to say, hey, church family, this is what we believe as your spiritual leaders. God is, God is leading us to help lead you in. And that's why you, you are here. One of the reasons you're here is to be fed with the Word of God and led by the Spirit of God. Amen? That's, that's it. And so there's faithfulness and commitment. And then and the, they, they were faithful in that in the apostles' doctrine. That is studying the scriptures together and applying what your shepherds are teaching you. And that will even come into play in small groups. And then again, same verse, verse 42. This is just full. I mean, this is a church in a nutshell. It says they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. That's the next word, fellowship. They didn't just get together for an hour and 15 minutes on a Sunday morning and sing a couple songs and have a prayer and say a memory verse and then, you know, show up right at uh, 10 o'clock and leave right on the button at 1.15. No, they did life together. They got together at Southside Diner and they broke ham bone together. And they got together at Southside Diner and listened to Dave... And Chris, go back and forth together with Lloyd. And so good to have Lloyd here today. He's been out for a couple of weeks, and we love you, Lloyd. And, but the fellowship together. Can I, I just read a, an article. It's not in my notes. Just read an article that said, if you want your church experience to radically change, here's a good formula. Show up 15 minutes before church starts. Stay 15 minutes after church ends. And I promise you, as a pastor and someone who strives to be uh, with you all, that is so true. If you say, oh, you know, our pastor, you know, we love him. We know he loves us, but this series is, uh, 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 you know, okay. I get it. You're not going to love everything you hear from me, most from what you hear from Gary. And... Uh, uh, I didn't realize that that was actually just put down. <laughs> he will not tickle your ears, I'm just telling you. So anyway, but you, 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 you've got to have more than just literally, and we all know what it's like, especially if you're a young family, you know, get, get in the car, we're going to sleep. Jesus, you know, and, and it's just like everything's heightened on God's day, you know? And, and you and your wife are, you know, not speaking, walking into the house of, don't look, don't look, oh, you know, like you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, some of you won't look at each other right now because you're, you're afraid you have to humble yourselves and start laughing. But you, uh, you, you the, the kids, you know, there's a video showing a young family going to church they're walking in, the one kid is missing a shoe, the wife's hair is front, and the, the husband's eyebrows missing, where he was shaving and they had to rush off to church and one of the kids cut his face or something. And it's just showing the reality that when we strive to, all who believe we're together, when we strive to make the effort and we're in, what you forget so much and we forget and I forget, we are in spiritual warfare. So when we gather together in this place, the enemy is going to fight that. And young families and seniors and all in between, you just have to go back to the beginning of this that says they continued steadfastly. You just got to make a decision in your mind and in your heart. Sit your kids down and say, I don't care if you think it's boring. I don't care if you're four. I don't care if you're 14. We're going to church as a family of God to be with the people of God, to worship the king, and you're going, and you're going you're gonna to grow from it. And if you don't grow from it, I'm going to knock you out. Okay, so you just, you just, one way this is going to be life-changing. Okay? 
Because by God's grace, we are going to obey Scripture and be together. However, if you show up right on time and you've kind of figured out your parking spot and learned how to just slide in there so you don't lose seconds and you come in here right when Lindsay hits the first key and then you're leaving during the invitation when there are souls here that are getting ready to respond to the gospel and we're like, oh man, I got, I'm out. I just, I can't do it. Look, just some of you, this will be literally, this will change your whole experience at this church. And I'm not, I, I hope that you understand, I'm trying to be loving and gracious and, and add in some humor, but I'm being absolutely serious. When you are excited about something, when your kids are excited about something, you, there's got to be both ways. Parents, your children need to see your faithfulness and commitment and your excitement not to show up right on the dot, but you're showing up early because you want them to know you give a care about one another. And I want to see you guys. And when we're studying the Scripture and when we're singing, that's not time to, to, to be mobile. That's a time to focus on God. But I'm getting together with you guys a few minutes before and after. I'm just, I, I don't want to leave. I want you to know that I love you. I, care. I want to hear about your needs. And so show up a little early, stay after a little late, because the great thing about with the time change, is somebody asked me today, are we going, are we going to go back to, to later hours? I'll just give you a little blurb right now. The large majority of people that we have talked to as leadership is people are saying, we, we love the 10 o'clock time, it's worked out good, and it's, it has created more opportunity for fellowship and, and just worked better for, so at this point, not, okay, that's a change, but at this point, we're not planning to change. It's just worked out well, been a blessing, and we're grateful for your response to that. So again, you've got to have fellowship, and that's what we're striving to do just besides here. I've said for years, and I'm not changing this statement. If you want it to be powerful and special and meaningful and influential in here, get together out there. And that's what small groups will be a part of. And you say, you know, I'll just, I'll, uh, I cannot, Pastor Gary cannot, uh, you know, on a, we strive to be as personal and together with you as we can, but there's, there's no way that we can get to every hospital call, uh, meet every need as much as we strive to, and we want to connect people. But the wonderful thing about if you're in a, in a group doing life together, that's part of God's process and purpose of a church family is that you, Galatians 6 to it, which means bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so the great thing about having fellowship and the group that you're together with besides in here but out there is that you're aware of the needs and you meet the needs and you help not only bear their burdens, but you help the pastors and leadership of the church in carrying the, the work of the Lord. Uh, verse 42, still in the same verse. And these will all be elements not only of a church, but of small groups fellowship, and then some of you are going to get real excited uh, because it says they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and then the breaking of bread. In the, I mean, do you realize what that just says? They got together, and they spent time together, and they ate carbs. I mean, that is just <laughs> phenomenal. It doesn't say they got together and they ate vegetables. You know, the promised land, what is it? Milk and honey and... And, and fruit. <laughs> it's just, you get into the New Testament and Jesus like, I'm the bread of life. You know, it's just, it's awesome, you know. So, uh, if any of you are gluten-free, I apologize, but I'm just, I'm just, again, just trying to remind you, they broke bread together. What does that mean? They, they ate together. It is amazing when you have a prayer meeting and the faithful few will show up. You have a potluck, good night, you know. Run to IGA, we ran out of barbecue sauce, you know. We've had to do that different times over the years, but people respond to, to food. And so that can be an element of here, as it is at times, but especially with small groups, just getting together and, you know, your group will figure out your, your menu, but 
Um, but it says in the breaking of bread, and obviously that also, the communion comes into that, having the Lord's Supper together. But it's just, it's more than that. It's, it's they got together and they had fellowship and they had food. That's great. And then it continues, same verse. Look how packed this thing is. It says in doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayer. That's the next word. Faithful and committed, number one. Studying scripture, number two. Fellowship, number three. Food, number four. Praise the Lord. Prayer, uh, number five. And then look at verse 43. What is the outcome? Spiritual growth. God works. God moves. Look at verse, what verse 43 says. Then fear, that is reverence and awe of God, submission to God, obedience to God. Then fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done through the apostles. And so all of a sudden, you see the hand of God begin to move on His people when they do life together, and when they just follow His formula, and they're not trying to add to it or diminish from it, but they just say, this is what God has called us to do. We're going to be steadfast in it. We're going to be faithful in it. We're going to include all of these elements in one way or the other. And then what happens? God says, you obey me. You trust me. I'm going to bless you. And He begins to move. He begins to move. And that's what you see when you obey the Lord. He will respond because what he says he will do, if we will do what he says. And so again, the heart of this series is that in this time in history when there's so much disconnect and, and there's so much isolation, that as God gives us wisdom and that we stick together and that we stay together and that we are being together, yet we know, and I'm not going to, uh, hit this, but Hebrews 10.25 says, Do not neglect the, the assembling of yourselves together like many do, but get together, encourage one another, exhort one another, and then it says, All the more as you see the day approaching. So small groups would, I think, fall into the all the more category, and gathering together, not neglecting gathering together, that's, that, this is a given. This is an absolute mandate and uh, beyond this, God just gives us wisdom to strive to meet the needs of our church family, and that's what we are doing. But again, beyond an hour and 15 to 30 minutes in here, what we're reading here is the all the more, that God wants us to do life together just beyond one worship service. Now, I want you to go to verse 44, same scripture, same chapter. And let's see our theme here. The people are obeying God, following God's plan. God responds, begins to move and do mighty works. And then verse 44 says, now, now, here's the outcome. All who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. And we'll pick up. But look at verse 46. It says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, there's church, and breaking bread from house to house. There are small groups or, or other types of gatherings. They ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God. And they had favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So what you see, besides the outcome of God moving, is look what it says again, verse 44, Now all who believe were together, and they were sharing and caring with one another. So the last word would be relationships or community, bearing burdens. So again, you've got faithfulness and commitment, <clears throat> studying scripture, fellowship, food, prayer, God's responding to the prayer and moving, and then you've got this thing called what? The church, and they're together. And this is what it looks like to be a God-honoring church who is on mission. You have relationships, community, and you are bearing one another's burdens. And so I want to encourage you, church family, that as we continue and move forward in these things, to ask yourself this question. 
I had a whole nother element of my message, and I just sense the Lord is saying, just, that's good. That's enough for today. Um, but I just was feeling urged earlier to share, and uh, so we're going to continue in this series, and maybe it's for next week. So here's, here's the question for today. When you look at our world, when you look at the Taylors, who this is the first day uh, without their husband, without their father, when you remember 9-11, both of them, 2001 and then the Bing, in Benghazi, and you look at the loss of life, and then you look at Afghanistan, and the media has a way of trying to just shift the narrative from that all of a sudden. And you look at the, the incredible uh, division and overreach of government into our lives like we've never seen. But just this week, like we've never seen before, um, you know, a government is there to serve the people and for the people. But no, this is all of a sudden turning to where we are going to tell you what you will do when we know that it is the people who tell the government what to do. But that's, that's getting backward. I, don't worry, I'm not getting off on that. But what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to explain is everything right now is heightened pitch. It is at a... Every nerve is, at the, is, is frayed in our society, in our world, in our homes. And it's, it's having a devastating impact. The suicide rates are skyrocketing. Marriages are, are crumbling. Children are rebelling. Schools are imploding. I mean, even in this community, I, I don't, won't go into that, but plenty of you know. Uh, there are new young leaders I know of that are stepping up to get on school boards to just try to just, just, just maintain the, the, the freedom that we do have. There's ones that have, that have held up the, the banner of truth for so long and they are transitioning out. So there's all of these, these, these tentacles of life that are, and, and spaghetti of relationships and people and truth and error and good and evil and, and victories and losses and godly leadership and then ungodly leadership and, and it just a boom, boom. And then, and then just add in your problems, your finances, your marital struggles, your job. And, and, and the world is just boom, boom. And I am here today to tell you that our only hope is this. On Jesus Christ, the solid rock I stand, all all, all other ground is sinking sand. Can we agree on that? Amen. That's where we are. And so, my challenge to you today, church, is to ask yourself a question. And Tom, you come. We're going to just have a, a closing verse of invitation. Here's, here's the application of today's message. Ask yourself this question. What steps and all that we've gone down through from last Sunday to this Sunday, what steps do I need to take to be together with God's family? Do I need to be saved? Am I a child of God? Have I been forgiven of my sins? That's the first step. We're going to have baptism, Lord willing, in the next few weeks. Have I been baptized? Have I let the world know that I belong to Jesus? And then am I faithful to church? Have I submitted myself to spiritual leadership and authority in my life from a pastor and deacons and, and church servants? Am I serving? Am I consume, a, a consumer where I just come and get? Or am I a, a contributor where I come and I, I participate? Uh, what, what is it that God is speaking to you about? God's been running me through this week on so many areas where I'm like, oh Lord, I just I need to adjust that and, and, and surrender that and, and, and do this and let this go and pick this up and pick this up and let this go. And, and I'm no different than all of you. 
But here's the question. What do you need to do to play out this theme of we believe, but are we together? And I'd ask you to bow your heads. I'm going to have a word of prayer and Tom's going to sing. And are you, are you surrendered to the Lord when it comes to this, this entity, this life called church? And are there any elements that we've touched on today that you know that God is saying, all right, it's, it's this time to, to step up. It's time to join in. It's time to, it's time to get together. Or maybe you're here today and you say, there's no togetherness in my life because I'm separated from God and I need Jesus to save me. And you can do that today also. And so I'm a word of prayer. And if you need to come to this altar, it's just open. We're going to stand and sing together in just a moment, but let me pray. And uh, my, my challenge to you today is just trust and obey. Trust and obey. And Father, we do come to you today trusting you. Lord, may, may there be obedience in this church house today. Lord, it's, it's being said more and more, church is not a building, church is a people, and that's true. And yet, Lord, we read all throughout Scripture about your church gathering together in the house of God. And Lord, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to be here together with this church family. And Lord, whether someone needs to come today and surrender their life to you, whether someone needs to come today and maybe even they've put it off, or maybe it's a very fearful thing to them in regards to baptism, maybe they need to just come today and say, Lord, I will do it. I will trust you. Maybe today it's someone who just says, one of those areas in Acts 2 just hit me, and I know, I know God is wanting me to act, be more actively involved in His church with His people. And so, Lord, as in the weeks to come, as we lay out these, this vision and these plans for our church, God, I pray that Your people would respond. I pray they would send the text to carry, that they would sign up at the back, that they would that they would respond to what has been presented to them today. But Lord, maybe first they need to just come and seek you. So Lord, your will be done today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand? And uh, as Tom sings. sake of you, my King. I'm giving you my dreams. I'm laying down my rights. I'm giving up my pride for the promise of new life. And I, I surrender all to you, all to And I, I surrender all to you, all to you. I'm singing you this song, I'm waiting at the cross, and all the world holds dear, I count it all as lost for the sake of knowing the glory of your name to know the lasting joy even sharing in your pain and I
surrender all to you, all to you. Well, church family, that's my challenge to you. Keep a surrendered heart, an obedient heart. Stay together, stay together, encourage one another, and let's trust the Lord that His purpose and plan for this church, that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen? Amen. Amen. We love you guys. You're dismissed.